What is up, you guys? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to a what? Uh-huh, a quick little video. As you can tell by the title of this video, this video is the live press conference from the Carly Russell case. Yes, the police from the Hoover Police Department went live and dropped some tea, y'all. They dropped some tea, and it sounds like Carly is... Ooh, Carly, you might be in trouble, girl. You might be in trouble. It sounds like Carly may be a little bit of a kleptomaniac. Carly was Googling and looking up some things that she shouldn't have been looking up. Let's just get into this mess. Ooh, what? We played a significant role around in local law enforcement agencies, the FBI, Secret Service, United States Mall. That occurred on Saturday, July 15th, approximately 49 hours after she called 911 and disappeared. From that point, our focus has been to determine Carly's whereabouts during that time and what exactly took place. Let me say up front, this investigation is not over. We're still working this case, and we've worked in this case until we uncover every piece of evidence that helps us account for the 49 hours that Carly Russell was missing. However, through the public interest, and in some cases, public fear, that this story has generated, we owe it to our citizens to tell them the facts that we have uncovered. So I will give you the facts that we know today. On July 13th, at approximately 8.20 p.m., Carly left work from a business at the summit. Surveillance video from her place of employment shows Carly concealed a dark-colored bathrobe, a roll of toilet paper, and other items belonging to the business prior to her departure. She ordered food from Tzatziki's at the Colonnade and traveled there. She then traveled to Target on 280, where she purchased some granola bars and Cheez-Its. From there, she remained in the parking lot at that shopping center until 9.21 p.m. when she drove to I-459. Carly communicated on her cell phone with individuals known to her while in her path of travel up to the point of calling 911 at 9.34 p.m. And at this time, we will play the 911 call in its entirety. Carly called a relative after speaking with the 911 operator. 
She went missing during that conversation sometime after 9.36 p.m. Traffic camera footage was obtained which depicted this portion of the incident, and that footage was analyzed as part of the investigation in conjunction with the 911 call and cell phone data to accurately determine the time frame. Carly's 911 call remains the only report of a child on the interstate, despite numerous vehicles passing through the area at that time. No one has called to report that a child is missing, and the Hoover Police Department did not locate any evidence of a small child walking down the interstate. Data from Carly's phone, including her Life360 app, shows that she traveled approximately 600 yards in her vehicle while she was on the phone with 911, stating that she was following a child. 600 yards, that is six football fields straight, 600 yards. The Hoover 911 Center received a second call from Carly's mother stating that a relative was on the phone with her when they heard Carly scream and then they had an open phone line. Hoover police officers arrived on the scene within five minutes of being dispatched and several other officers arrived shortly. They located Carly's wig and cell phone in the grass near the vehicle. Her purse was located in the front seat of her vehicle with her Apple uh, watch in the purse. The food she ordered for tzatziki's was also in the car. The items she purchased from Target, as well as the items taken from her place of employment, were not in the vehicle, nor were they located anywhere around the scene. Hoover Police deployed all available assets from the point in the search for Carly. Additional resources were called in to include our own drone unit, crime scene investigators, numerous detectives responded to the scene. Throughout the day Friday, Officers from surrounded local and federal agencies assisted Hoover Police in the search for Carly Russell. Officers returned to the scene on 459 to conduct a thorough line search for evidence. K-9 teams from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department responded to check for any sign of Carly, the child that she claimed to see, and anything else that could be considered evidence in this case. Those searches all turned up empty. Private citizens, including search parties organized by our family, friends, began looking everywhere that they could to find any trace. These searches took place throughout the day Friday and again on Saturday, yielding nothing. At 10.44 p.m. on July 15th, the Hoover 911 center receives a call from Carly's residence stating that she returned home on foot. In subsequent investigations, detectives obtained surveillance footage of Carly walking down the sidewalk alone prior to arrival at her residence. She was conscious and speaking with paramedics when she was transported to UAB. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car, and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She told detectives the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her, but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. 
Detectives continue analyzing data from Carly's cell phone that was left behind at the scene. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data includes several internet searches in the days leading up to her disappearance that I think are very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, do you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. On July 13th at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught was searched. On July 13th at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term Birmingham bus station was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about a production, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content of those searches at this time. We've asked to interview Carly a second time, but have not been granted that request. As you can see, there are many questions left to be answered, but only Carly can provide those answers. What we can say is that we've been unable to verify most of Carly's initial statement made to investigators, and we have no reason to believe that there is a threat to the public safety related, related to this particular case. Thank you very much. With that, we'll open the floor. Hey, did y'all hear what he said? Did y'all hear what he said, y'all? He said that Carly looked up the movie Taken. What was you looking up the movie Taken for, and how much does it cost for an Amber Alert? And then a few days later, you're lost? You're missing? Honey, you got some explaining to do, and why don't you want to talk to the, detec the detectives? If you were abducted, I would want to speak to them tonight. I don't need a nap. I'm not tired. I'm happy I'm alive. Baby, make sure I like, follow, and share. Until next time, beautiful people. Woo! Peace.